Creative Katie Karen Birchill here. Welcome to a napkin journal tutorial. This one with a twist. Here's the finished vintage page that I created using the twisted napkin. So instead of using the pre-purchase napkin, what I'm using here is the white plies that you pull off when you use the other part of the napkin. And I will put a link to the video where I give details on how I did this and the tips and tricks that I learned along the way. So basically I am applying acrylic paint with a makeup sponge through the napkin to get the pattern on the napkin. And that's to benefit from the translucent properties that happen when you use napkin material. So I went into my stash and got out a bunch of vintage papers, some of my tea, dye, tea dyed papers, and I ripped them and fit them onto the page. I played off camera with the placement of it. In the top left hand corner, it says Eau de Lavende. Excuse my accent, I'm probably mispronouncing that. And I want to keep that word because, of course, I'm putting lavender on the page. What I want to do here is create a vintage background. I'm just layering these on, layering the pages. Every time there's a layer, it's going, and that we use different papers, it's going to take whatever I put on top of this differently. Where they meet will also catch future applications of paint and what have you differently. So I'm gluing that down with Liquitex liquid matte medium. The, what the, this little uh, X pattern, that's on rice paper and it adheres down differently than the pages that are on copy paper. So once that's dry, I grab out two Crafters Workshop stencils. This one's called Postcart. Postcart. I believe the names will be in the description box below. And I'm using this makeup brush with archival ink. And I'm putting some of these vintagey looking um, cart postal is what it's called. There we go. Uh, vintage looking things on here, things, motifs. It's got some script and this it's really showing up well. Remember archival ink is permanent. So once it's dry, I can put wet medium on there. And I'm just building up interest on and creating more of a vintage feel. This one is called Raven Mosaic. And both of these are Crafters Workshop stencils and both of them are by the designer Rebecca Meyer. And she has a lot of vintage looking, feeling stencils with the Crafters Workshop. And I'm placing that vase there just to get, because I know there's no point in me putting anything where that vase is going to be because it, you won't be seeing it. So I'm just going and adding enough as I go. And I'm choosing black because I am going to be putting a, a layer of glaze on here in a moment. Using this makeup brush, um, is great and it helps get into the stencils and there are there are makeup brushes in that set that are smaller and for tight tighter stencils works really really well so now i'm using this stencil it's called ethereal and i am using the crafters workshop light and fluffy modeling paste now I put a bit of a paper on top of the word that I don't want to cover up. And I'm, that's what I'm doing there too with the vase. I'm using it as a mask so I don't put any modeling paste underneath it. Because that's just going to make it harder for me to glue down the vase. Now, some people might ask, why would you stencil the lavender 
onto the napkin instead of just stenciling it right onto the page. Well, the page now, as do a lot of my pages, has a lot of texture from the layers of papers that I put down and the modeling paste. And when you decoupage the napkin paper, it can just fit very well overall over the whole thing and it's easy to apply. So here I'm taking burnt umber and I'm mixing it with glazing medium and painting it on. And now I'm doing the little bit of the dance, taking some off, adding some more, taking some off, adding some more till I get the tone and the color, the depth of color that I want. And again, the different papers are going to take the color differently. And my hope is where it's modeling paste, the pigment, the glazing medium is going to stick onto that and really show off the texture of the modeling paste. So I'm loving the looks of this. Now, when it comes to applying from the stencil stuff that I put on the napkin, I'm just going to do exactly what I would do if this was just a regular napkin and I was using the top ply. I am going, I'm using a brush dipped in water. I use a small angle brush. I find the most success and I'm just using it to cut the paper. I cut a little bit and pull it off, cut a little bit and pull it off. And I'm explaining this in more detail in the video where I, the build your stash video, where I show and give you the tips and tricks of this. Now, my goal here is to layer these up. Put, you know, you're going to see me put the second layer of lavender on top of the first layer. And you're going to see once it's dry, all these layers showing through because remember the white part of the napkin will dry if not transparent very translucent you're going to be able to see the vintage papers you're going to see anything that's underneath it and putting it on the napkin allows me to easily manipulate where I want the lavender to go and to develop this bouquet and you're going to see me doing more of that with other um, napkins that I create at using stencils. I'm using my woodless charcoal pencil here and edging around the page to frame the page. And that's just adding to the vintage look. And now I'm trying, trying to taking the woodless charcoal pencil and going on top of where the modeling paste is to just give it a little extra grunge. And I'm adding a little bit where the edges of papers are meeting and in between the lavender. And this is providing some shading in amongst my lavender. It pushes back if there's some white from the napkin there. Now, I made sure that the napkin is completely dry. You do not want to go in with any pencil, charcoal pencil, anything until it's completely dry because you will rip your napkin. Now I'm going to glue this vase back in place. And originally I had traced it out just so I could place where the lavender stalks go. So I knew how, what the, the opening of the vase would be or vase. This is a gel print that I cut out and I, I just went online and got clip art for a vase. You can draw it on your own if you so wish. But I'm just showing you that if you think you can't draw it, there are ways around that. You can bring up a clip art and either print it off like I did or just use, get the idea of the shape. Now I'm using the General's Charcoal Pencil and I'm shading around the vase here. And I shade on the background and I shade on the top of the gel print as well. 
And when it comes to adding highlights and shading, I think that's something I need to start doing is bring up a photo of something in a vase and look at where the shadows and the light falls and start learning how to highlight and shade properly. So here I'm taking the using the float technique and I'm using white and I'm trying to provide some highlights and I'm not exactly liking everything that I'm doing but you know I'm in it and this is where I decided that I need to just go online and look at some stock photos and see where the light is hitting and try to really think about it and learn. Now I'm taking the white paint and adding it adding some highlights on the lavender and this really bumped up. Now I did also go in with some of the darker purple and I think that was off camera, but this really added another dimension to the lavender and made it very painterly and I really love the effect. So you have the stenciling, I'm using that as a guide, but then I've gone in and I've added more and that added a little bit of more texture and there is texture that you get from it being on the, the napkin paper that you wouldn't get if you had just stenciled it. And you can see the lovely texture that's there on the gel print. It didn't go down perfectly smooth. And I play that up by um, adding, rubbing dark and light and gold onto the vase and it makes it all the more realistic. Here I'm dabbing a little bit of gold on the high points of the, what was applied with texture paste. And then I take the black paint and I'm right putting it on the high points here and really bringing out the texture. And you can see, and here I'm adding gold and I'm adding the black, and now it looks like this vintage vase. So what was a happy accident that it didn't adhere smoothly turned into being a wonderful gift because now it just all works together so much better. It just enriched the whole page. So because I lost some of that by adding, you can see I'm still not happy with it, but you know what, I'll learn. So I grab this stencil and I'm spelling the word breathe. Right now I think we all need to calm ourselves down and breathe. Just relax, breathe, think on things that you love, things that bring you joy and creating and teaching brings me joy. So. You know, I'm finding myself in my studio a little more often. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some close-ups of the finish, finished page. I hope you love it as much as I do. Give me a thumbs up. Share the video with your creative friends. If you give it a try, share what you create on my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations. Bye for now.